Despite being staged, the dangers wrestlers face are often very real. Today we'll have a look at seven of the world's worst injuries in professional wrestling history. Number 7. Joey Mercury To botch in professional wrestling means to attempt a scripted move or a scripted line that ultimately does not come out as planned because of a miscalculation, slip-up, or mistake. Most botches are harmless and mainly consist of a wrestler missing his cue, improperly delivering a line, or falling before an opponent's move connects. However, there are examples of botches that have resulted in life-threatening injuries and even death. In late 2006, during WWE's event Armageddon, Joey Mercury and his partner John Morrison took part in a fatal four-way tag team match in which the titles were hung high above the ring and the wrestlers could only reach them by using ladders. Several ladders had been brought to the ring towards achieving the goal within the storyline. Near the midway point of the match, however, Mercury received a legitimate and quite graphic injury. During the bout, Jeff Hardy, one of Mercury's opponents, jumped from the ropes onto a ladder that had been placed on top of another with the purpose of creating a type of seesaw which was meant to hit Mercury and his partner. Unfortunately, Mercury took a direct hit and blood started to gush out of his face. His nose and orbital bone were broken and he would require more than 30 stitches. After a few weeks, Mercury returned to the ring wearing a protective mask. Number 6. Steve Austin in 1997, Stone Cold Steve Austin was one of WWE's quickest rising stars that had achieved a massive following due to his rebel persona. Although his popularity would continue to grow, his career would forever be plagued by an injury he sustained during an intercontinental title match against Owen Hart at SummerSlam 1997. Near the end of the match, Hart performed a pile driver on Austin, which is a sit-down upside-down slam. However, Austin's head was much lower than it should have been in order for his neck to be protected. When Hart dropped him, Austin's head and neck were jammed hard into the ground, and he was immediately unable to move his shoulders and neck muscles. He struggled through the pain to complete the match's predetermined finale, and even though the fans saw him get the win, the resulting broken neck would take him out of the circuit for three months. The reoccurring effects of the injury would require surgical intervention in 1999, and Austin was unable to compete for 10 months. He had to change his fighting style so that that he would not endanger his neck and spinal cord and ultimately retired in 2003. Number 5. Shawn Michaels while competing in a 1998 Royal Rumble match, Shawn Michaels, who was at the height of his career at the time, sustained a back injury that would cost him four years of his career. The accident took place during a casket match between Michaels and The Undertaker. The objective of the fight was for one wrestler to put the other in a casket and close the lid. In order for the wrestler to complete the scenario, a casket had been placed ringside. After performing a reverse jump from the ring, Michaels landed on his back on the edge of the casket. Basket. He did not realize it at the time, but the injury resulted in one shattered and two herniated discs in his back. Many people, including Michaels himself, believed that he would not wrestle again. Even though he missed four years of his prime, Michaels made a recovery and returned to the ring at SummerSlam in 2002. Number 4. Darren Drozdov during a 1999 match against D'Lo Brown, Darren Drozdov sustained one of the most severe injuries in professional wrestling history. When Brown performed a running powerbomb, his signature move on Drozdov, he was unable to get a proper grip on him because the latter was wearing a loose shirt during the match. Drozdov also failed to execute a proper jump to assist Brown in the lift leading up to the powerbomb. Drozdov landed on his head and fractured two discs in his neck. He was taken out on a stretcher and and despite the extensive medical care and the efforts to reduce the swelling in his spine, the injury left him a quadriplegic, with essentially no mobility below the neck. Drozdov never blamed Brown for the tragic end to his career, and always expressed his belief that it had been an unfortunate accident. The injury took place during a WWF SmackDown taping, and not before a live audience, and the match was never aired. Drozdov was ultimately able to gain some mobility in his upper body, and continued to work for the WWE as a writer and a columnist. Number 3. Mick Foley 
Also known as Cactus Jack, Dude Love, or Mankind, wrestler Mick Foley was respected among his peers and loved by wrestling fans for his physical toughness. Throughout his career, Foley would engage in a number of hardcore matches in which he would go through tables, barbed wire, and take multiple chair shots to the head. During a mid-1998 match against The Undertaker, Foley's tendency for always pushing his physical limits almost produced a fatal outcome. The Hell in a Cell match took place during a WWE King of the Ring event, and the competitors faced off in a steel cage measuring 15 to 20 feet that had been erected over the ring. The event had no restrictions on the use of weapons, as tables, chairs, and even thumbtacks were allowed. Before the crowd of roaring fans, Foley, who was then wrestling under the name Mankind and The Undertaker, took the fight to the top of the steel cell. Foley was then thrown off the cell and into the commentator's table, situated 20 feet below. The fall not only caused him to lose consciousness, but also resulted in him suffering a dislocated shoulder and a collapsed lung. He laid under the broken table debris for several minutes before the medical personnel arrived and used a stretcher to carry him towards an exit point. Mick Foley then proved to the world why the fans called him the King of Hardcore. After a 20-foot drop that many believed had represented the end of his career and had caused one of the commentators to shout, Good God Almighty! Good God Almighty! That killed him! As God is my witness, he is broken in half, a noticeably dazed Mick Foley got up from the stretcher with a smile on his face and rushed towards the ring. Foley and The Undertaker quickly scaled the cell once more, and they continued to fight on top of it. This time, The Undertaker had also brought a chair with the intention of using it against Foley. He then performed a choke slam that sent Foley down 15 feet through the top of the cell and onto the hard mat. Neither of the two wrestlers had expected the cell's roof panel to collapse, and in a later interview, the Undertaker said that he believed the second fall had killed Foley. Many of those watching the Hell in the Cell match believed the same, and the commentators urged for the match to be stopped. The footage then showed the King of Hardcore smiling through his bleeding mouth and a loose tooth dangling from his nose. As he fell through the top of the cell, the chair fell with him, landed on his face, and dislocated his jaw. Even after the horrific drop, the match that many still consider to be among the most brutal in wrestling history History continued. Foley was later slammed by The Undertaker into hundreds of thumbtacks, which he himself had previously strewn onto the ring canvas. Foley ultimately lost the match, but both wrestlers received a standing ovation at the end. Afterwards, Foley admitted that he could not remember most of the match. The 1998 bout was not, however, Foley's first brush with death or disfigurement. In a 1999 I Quit match for the WWE belt, Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock, hit Foley 10 times in the head with a metal chair in front of his wife and children who were present ringside. Aside from a massive gash on his head and a bloodied face, the strikes also left Foley with several concussions. While on the WCW tour in 1994, Mick Foley sustained one of his most famous injuries. He was wrestling in Munich, Germany under the name Cactus Jack in a match against Vader, his long-standing rival. Foley got his head caught between the first and second rope in a move called the Hangman man that would make it look as if he was choking. Unfortunately, the ropes were too tight, and as he struggled to free himself, Foley severely damaged his right ear. When he returned to the ring and began to trade blows with Vader, a large chunk of his ear fell onto the mat. The referee did not speak English and was unable to tell Foley about what had happened. Instead, he picked up his ear and handed it to the ring announcer. Number 2. Sid Udy Standing at 6 foot 9 and weighing over 300 pounds, Sid Udy's constitution meant that attempting aerial maneuvers would be quite a challenge for him. Unfortunately, during a 2001 match for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, his reluctant attempt at executing a Bigfoot from the top of the second turnbuckle resulted in a near career-ending injury. The move consisted of him kicking with one foot extended while landing on the other. Udy botched the landing and broke his leg in half snapping both the tibia and the fibula. At least one of the bones reportedly broke through his skin. During the two-hour surgery, a 17-inch rod was placed in his leg, and for a period of time afterwards, Yudi used a cane to walk. Number 1. Owen Hart 
The death of Owen Hart inside the ring is often cited as the most heartbreaking moment in professional wrestling history. It took place during a 1999 WWE event called Over the Edge. At the time, Owen Hart was wrestling under the Blue Blazer persona, an unpopular and buffoonish superhero. The plan was for Hart to be lowered from the ceiling high above the ring with the use of a harness and grapple line. The harness featured a quick release mechanism. Hart had performed the stunt a few times before. As soon as he would have reached the level of the ring, he was supposed to act tangled, release the mechanism, and fall flat on his face in the ring, in keeping with the idea of his buffoonish persona. In a tragic turn of events, the mechanism was triggered too early, as Hart was being lowered in the ring. One theory is that he had released the mechanism by accident while trying to get comfortable with both his cape and the harness on. Other theories claim that the harness was defective. Hart fell to his death from 78 feet. He landed chest first on the top rope and was thrown into the ring. Hart received immediate medical attention and was taken to the hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The official cause of death was internal bleeding caused by blunt force trauma. The television viewers did not see the accident as they were shown a pre-taped vignette during the fall. The same footage was also displayed on the monitors in the darkened arena. As Hart was receiving medical attention, the announcer told those watching the live pay-per-view that the accident was real and not part of a prefabricated storyline emphasizing the fact that Hart was seriously injured. The controversy that followed his death was mainly aimed at the poor planning and dangerous nature of the stunt, on an allegedly defective safety harness, and on the fact that the WWE continued the event after the fatal accident. Hart's family sued the WWF and settled the case for $18 million on the 2nd of November 2000. Giant men have appeared on the internet. The most famous of these was the story about a giant human skeleton uncovered in the desert during gas exploration in Saudi Arabia. Pictures were included, linked with the Islamic story of the Prophet Hud and the powerful giant tribe of Ad. 